a, uh, a, a fairly uh, humorous and maybe even hysterical thing happened to me this week, uh, and also I think very cute as well, involving my three-year-old goddaughter. Uh, her name is Lucy, and this week, December 13th, is the church, the church remembers, in a special way, St. Lucy, and that, that's her feast day. And so, in trying to instill uh, a love for the church's calendar uh, in my goddaughter Lucy, um, I, I called her on the, the feast of St. Lucy and asked her, could I bring you a gift when I come back to Indianapolis on Friday for the feast day today of St. Lucy? And she said, yes. Can I guess what it is? That was her question. She's three. And I said, sure, absolutely. And I hadn't bought anything, so I was hoping to use that then <laughs> as my uh, barometer, uh, as my, my list. And she said, uh, she's, they're, they're really into Star Wars, uh, her brothers and sister. And uh, so uh, she said, I, want, I, I, I think it's a TIE fighter, which is the sh one of the ships from Star Wars. And I said, wow, okay, do you have any other guesses? And she said, no, just a TIE fighter. <laughs> and so um, I went home on Friday, uh, then uh, yesterday, and just decided the easiest thing to do would be to take Lucy to Meyer and let Lucy pick out the gift, right? Because then it sounded like she had a very specific vision uh, for what this gift needed to be. And so Lucy and I yesterday uh, went to Meyer and uh, she was, it was just an awesome hour for me. And uh, she had this leopard hat on, but it was kind of crooked and, and it hung down in her face and she had this cute jacket on and boots and we, we were walking through the parking lot at Meyer, and I'm just like looking down and I'm like I'm leading her but she's really like she's the one in charge and this is awesome and I'm really glad and, and love it that way I'm glad it's that way and so we went to Meyer, we went through the toy section and she went through and and I was kind of thinking you know again she had a very specific vision and uh, so I was thinking it was going to be kind of an in and out trip um, I don't have any children, obviously, so I'm not <laughs> thinking through that. Um, but she went through the toy aisles at Meyer and touched every toy, and then like with just complete joy and wonder and awe, and just like would tell me about it, you know, what it did or why she loved it. And so we went through and she touched every toy. We went through the Star Wars section and she was somewhat impressed, but she kept going past the Star Wars. She wanted to see everything. So we, we touched, uh, she went through and told me everything. And then she saw some, some balls that she wanted to play with. So I got them out and we started kicking them around in the toy aisle. And um, she set up a game where we were uh, soccer goals, where I had to get it off the dog food in the aisle and uh, all of this stuff. And so I'm, I'm sitting here kicking a ball around in, in Meyer which I'm not sure if it's technically legal. Um, but we're playing in the toy aisle at Meyer, and I'm just like, I would have never done this on my own, obviously. If I had been doing it on my own without her, I probably would have been arrested anyways. Um, but there we were playing, again, in, in, the, in the toy aisle at Meyer, and she ended up not wanting a TIE fighter. Thank, they were $50, so I was, but I was gonna pay. If it was 50, if it was a TIE fighter, that was, but uh, she ended up just, she found some little, toy laser thing that she enjoyed and was just completely content with. And we went out and then she was also, I think, just as equally thrilled by the water, 25 cent watermelon gum that she got uh, out of the, the, the quarter thing on the way out. And um, for me, it was just like this really profound <laughs> moment, right? This time that I, again, I, I, was, I was expecting it was going to be memorable, but there was just so much more to it um, that I took away from it. And, and um, you know, and, and if, if all you remember is that story, I, I, I hope that that's not what you walk away from and just remember, you know, father taking his goddaughter, cute goddaughter shopping. Because there, what I want to do is, 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 is draw out for you, like I, I think for me what I 
it really hit me that, that it has a lot to do with this weekend uh, and the readings that we celebrate. Because this weekend, the church calls this Gaudete Sunday or Rejoice Sunday. It's why we're wearing a slightly different shade of, of purple uh, today. There, the, we recognize that Christmas is coming, and so the church actually encourages us to, to, and, and mentions joy. In the second reading, we hear the word rejoice Right? We hear all of these, these encouragements this weekend about rejoicing and having joy. And, and, and for me, I got a perfect example of joy yesterday. A person who was completely tense. I would not have walked around and been in awe of every toy at Meyer. Probably none of them. But she was. Lucy was. Lucy had that joy. And I think that's so often, I mean... I've preached about Lucy before and some of my other nieces and nephews as well. And I think that's why Christ tells us all the time, look at kids. Become like children. Jesus says it multiple times. Become like children. And that's the key to joy. Right? I have way more than Lucy. I, I, I have way more authority. I have way more money. I have way more ability to make the world or make my life around me whatever I want it to be than Lucy does. She's completely powerless, except over my heart and her parents' heart. But she has no real, obviously, no real power, no real wealth, no ability to control things. And yet everything that she sees is full of joy and wonder. And so when we hear this word rejoicing, I think we do well to take stock for a moment of where is our joy? Are we full of joy? Because it's a great indicator, I think, of where we are in our spiritual life, right? What we hear that, again, in the second reading, St. Paul is telling the Thessalonians, rejoice in all things. Rejoice in all things, even a trip to Meyer. And I know that had I had to go to Meyer, I would not have rejoiced in that. I don't rejoice in a lot of the things in my life. And I think a lot of us, as adults, we don't. We don't rejoice. We have to be told by God to rejoice. And again, I think it's because of our wealth. That's why Christ says it's so hard to get into heaven when you have everything. Because when you have everything, then nothing really brings you joy. When, you, when you're in control, when you're not allowing the wonder and awe that is there. There was a, a great quote about this weekend's readings from St. Jose Maria Escriva. And I just wanted to read it to you very briefly. He said this about this command to rejoice. Being children of God, how can we be sad? Sad is the end product of selfishness. If we truly want to live for God, we will never lack cheerfulness. Sadness, he says, is rooted in selfishness. Now sometimes, obviously, he's not talking about the sort of sadness that comes into our lives in the midst of pain or loss. But a lot of the sadness that we feel, particularly manifested in frustration, anger, you know, all of these things that sometimes are even ramped up during this season, all of those things are really rooted in selfishness. And I'm the, I'm the first and the forerunner of that, right? A lot of the things that we get impatient about, all of those things are rooted in because I want it to be about me. And what is, we have a perfect example in the gospel today of this, of how to not do that. They keep coming to John the Baptist and they're like, you're the Christ, aren't you? And he's like, nope, I'm just here to point the way to Jesus. I am nothing other than the person crying out, pointing people to Christ. And they wanted to crown him and they wanted to make him Christ and they wanted to, et cetera, et cetera, give him authority and power and all of these things, right? But he says, no, I'm here to point to Christ. There's no selfishness in John. John empties himself to point to Christ. And I think what we need to do, someone was, it was recently, I, I came across this, some Catholic source or whatever I was reading, I can't remember where it was or I would give it credit. But it was talking, it had the word joy spelled out. And the first letter, J, was for was Jesus. And the second letter, O, was for others. And then the third letter, Y, was for yourself saying that this is the order for us as Christians 
if we want to find joy. Jesus has to be first. We have to be people who point to Jesus, who listen to Jesus, who ask ourselves, how can we do Jesus' will? Lord, what is it that you want for me? I want to make you the center of my life. And then the next ring outside of the center of my life of you is other people. And then the final and furthest, my furthest worry is myself. A lot of people who have no power, who have no money, who have no authority, or who are children, they don't have the ability to make themselves the center of the universe. But you and I, we do. We have the ability to do that. And when we do that, it robs us of joy. It robs us of everything that we are supposed to be experiencing as disciples, that Christ wants us to experience as disciples. And so as we sit here eight days from Christmas, our Christmas celebration is eight days, that eight days of preparation, the church says that on this weekend for eight days we spend in preparation now, really waiting and thinking about Christmas. How full of joy are we? And if we're not full of joy, is Jesus really the center of your life or are you? Are you really trying to have and see the world with the heart of a child? Or are you trying to see the world through the eyes of, of selfishness? And to the extent that our heart is focused on ourselves, that we do not have the heart of a child, we pray that we may be touched by the heart of Christ. Turn again to his example. Spend this last week of Advent in prayer, maybe giving something up, spending more time in silence, denying ourselves so that Jesus can fill and once again become the center of our hearts. We pray that this final season, this final week of Advent may be one in which we strive to become more like children in the eyes of God. And once again, recognizing the joy and the wonder of everything that God has created in our midst. And we give thanks for the ability to do that, to make that change in our lives. We pray that we may have the courage to do it.